The user interface to any CAD CAM system becomes second nature once you've been using it for a while. If you've been using CAD tools like SOLIDWORKS but are new to Fusion 360, let's take a few minutes to do a quick tour of the interface so you feel comfortable getting around. And I'll go over some ways you can configure and customize it to work with your own personal preferences and common workflows. When you open Fusion 360 and log in for the first time, you start with a new blank design where you can begin creating geometry. On the left is the data panel where you manage your design projects, keep track of versions, collaborate with your team, and save and retrieve data in the cloud. To open one of these, I'll just double click it. At any time, you can show or hide the data panel using this icon to free up more screen space. So this design was opened as a new tab here at the top. You can open as many designs as you like and each will have its own tab or you can insert them into a design that is already open. If you would like to start a new design, you can use the pull-down menu at the top. I'll go ahead and close this blank design. To get around in the graphics area, what we call the canvas in Fusion 360, you can zoom in and out by rolling the center mouse button, zoom to extents by double-clicking the middle mouse button, pan by pressing and holding down the middle mouse, and you can rotate, what's known here as orbit, by holding down the shift key on the keyboard, along with the middle mouse button. The view cube also provides a quick way to switch between standard views, or rotate the view clockwise and counterclockwise. Clicking the home icon will take you right back to the default isometric view. If you notice this arrow near the view cube, an option I like here is the ability to switch to perspective view, which provides a bit more realistic visualization, and the perspective with ortho faces, which keeps the perspective view until you look directly at a face and it switches to ortho automatically. At the bottom, there are icons to access some of the orbit, pan, and zoom functions I mentioned a moment ago. But one I'd like to point out here is Look At, which allows you to select any planar face in the design to look directly at it. There are a couple of other tools here to adjust view settings, the environment, and grid, but I'll skip over those for now. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to this row of icons along the bottom. This is the history timeline in Fusion 360 which contains all of the actions such as sketches and features that were used to create all of the various bodies and components in this design. If I click on a feature graphically, notice a small icon appears over that feature in the timeline, letting you know which feature that selection belongs to, and you can edit any feature or sketch simply by double-clicking on it. As you have probably seen in other history-based CAD systems, this history timeline is where you can roll back and reorder features as needed. And as you continue to add new geometry, features are added to this timeline in order, building off of one another. As you move to the bottom right, you'll notice the gear icon. This gives you options to toggle color assignment to various components, as well as to switch to direct modeling mode by turning the history timeline off. I'll address the advantages of this feature in a later video. The toolbar along the top has logical groupings based on what you want to do. The Create flyout has tools for adding new primitives or sketch-based features like Extrude, Revolve, Sweep, Loft, Patterns, Mirror, etc. And the Modify flyout has tools that let you apply things such as fillets, chamfers, shell, and draft to existing geometry. Assemble has tools you'd use in creating assemblies and motion, and the Sketch flyout, as you might expect, has all of the sketch tools for creating 2D geometry. You can easily customize these toolbars, which is great for adding commands you might use frequently. Next to each of the tools in any of the flyout menus, there's an option to add to toolbar. So, for instance, I might want to add Create Sketch, the Line tool, or from the expanding menus, add the center rectangle or center diameter circle. You can click and drag to move the icons anywhere on the toolbar, or to get rid of them, just click and drag them off the toolbar. 
Over on the left in conventional CAD software, you'd expect this to be the history tree. In Fusion 360, it is the item browser. The browser provides quick access to all of the bodies, sketches, construction geometry, and components here in this design. When your design has multiple components, the browser provides a place where you can define assembly structure as you create components and sub-assemblies which can contain their own components. The light bulb icons in the browser help you control visibility by toggling the display of anything listed here. It can sometimes be helpful to show existing sketches as the basis for new features or for reference. One behavior I would like to point out is toggling off the light bulb for bodies. Or perhaps for this example, I'll toggle off sketches. The result is that all sketches will be hidden from display. Let me create a new sketch here. And as I do so, notice I can access what is called the marking menu by right-clicking. The marking menu is always available in Fusion 360. It contains context-sensitive tools at your fingertips based on what you are doing. Notice, as I go to sketch the geometry, nothing appears. But if I toggle the sketch display back on, you can see the geometry is in fact there. Just something to be aware of in case you hide items from the browser here. You can also change the units that are used in the design directly from here in the browser by clicking on it and selecting Change Active Units, so I can switch from millimeters to inches. Note that this unit change will only take effect here in this design. In case you would like to set a default unit for future designs, you can go to the drop-down menu of your account settings and select Preferences. Under Default Units, you can set the default unit you would like for designs. Also, while you're here in Preferences, you can make the pan, zoom, and orbit behaviors of your mouse to be consistent with other CAD programs like SolidWorks, Inventor, or Alias. Just go to General, and from the pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts dropdown, you can select the software from here. I'll go ahead and click OK. One of the nice things about Fusion 360 being connected to your account in the cloud is that all of the customizations I showed you, including toolbar changes, units, and mouse behaviors, are stored with your account. So any computer that you use that has Fusion 360 installed will remember all of these settings when you open the program and log in. There's still quite a lot to cover in Fusion 360, but for now I hope this gave you a nice orientation to the user interface. One last thing before wrapping up. I would like to quickly mention that if you have any questions or need additional resources, the Help drop-down provides you with a pathway to search for answers in the Fusion 360 online help, or access the forums where there is a vibrant Fusion 360 community, or try out some of the step-by-step -step tutorials inside of the software itself.